Hey YouTube, hi, it's, it's uh, First Age here. I'm here for another video. And I'm here for an exciting one. They're always exciting, aren't they? But um, I'm talking about the most anticipated role-playing game of 2023. I'm not sure if officially by the uh, uh, N-World standard it is the most uh, anticipated RPG, but it's certainly one of them. And it's my most anticipated RPG, and it is Dragon Bane Free Leagues um, 2023, coming middle of the year, let's say August-ish. Um, take on a 40-year Nordic classic, Drakkar och Demona, Dragons and Demons, based itself on the 1982 Magic World. So it's got BRP DNA, I'm going to say, BRP DNA, uh, as, as we'll see. And I'm going to do a quick tour through the beta PDF. The, the beta is out for uh, Kickstarters. Um, I think you can still be a late backer. If you want to join the party, please do. It's great. Um, and you'll get yourself a light, just over 100 page rule book, uh, heroic fantasy, I'm going to say, um, fantasy RPG, definitely got BRP DNA in it. It's got quite a lot of the uh, free league design flourishes that you might expect. So um, I think it for me, it's one of those games that's got just the right ingredients, the blend that um, gives me the tingles and gets me excited. And I'm very excited about this game. I think this game is going to get a lot of play, at least for me. And I think for a lot of people. Um, and I'll try and show you why. I'm not, obviously it's not particularly a hard sell. You carry on playing the games you want to play, but I think it's going to be slightly brill. I'm going to just transition across and look at the sort of mock-up of what we're going to get in, um, well, August time, maybe. Some physical components. We'll get a nice map of Misty Vale. Um, we'll get a rule book. We'll get an adventure book with a whole range of um, introductory adventures, each of which playable in roughly a session. Um, but overall, it's going to get a nice little tight little campaign uh, for, to get you up and running. Uh, it won't come especially with its own setting. Uh, but it will produce you with the sort of misty veil sort of points of light setting um, to get you going um, and then you can expand outwards be sort of beyond the outer mountains to wherever you really want to go with it um, it will come with some assumptions the assumptions are built into the rules you'd expect that um, but it's a fairly light and open sort of a fantasy role-playing game um, which I've now played a few, quite a few times, uh, including with the family, and it's gone down a storm. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think there's some dice, you'll get some initiative cards, you might get some stand-up figures, uh, you'll get it in a box. In a box, yes. Uh, and it'll, it'll be a lovely, it'll be a lovely thing because it's free league, so it's bound to be a lovely thing. So that's kind of what we're gonna get which is rather exciting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition straight over to the beta PDF, which is available now. This is the second version of the beta. We're expecting, I don't know why, I'm, I, but I think there might be a third beta, maybe even a fourth, uh, before they go for the sort of final lockdown version of the game. They're still taking input on their forums. Um, changes are being made here and there. I would I'd probably want to call them tweaks rather than anything too major or structural but nevertheless um, they are listening and making those few changes um, i may mention one or two of the changes that i've spotted uh, on the way so let's have a look at the pdf now okay not quite seamless there but good enough so what do we get in our game okay let's take a look at what we have here so here's the contents page um Character generation, playing your characters. You can see straight away, we've got some uh, kin professions, um, of which there are a range there. Um, your age, which is uh, basically youngling, adult, or oldster. I think they call it something different. And that affects the number of skills you get, basically, to start with and slightly modifies your uh, attributes. Um, your name, there's a lot in a name, uh, your attributes themselves, which we'll take a look at, um, any derived ratings um, that you have, we'll look at those, things like body points and willpower points and movement and things like that. Uh, 
your attributes, your derived ratings. That's right, skills. Um, it's a skill-based game. Um, equal to or less than a skill. Skills will increment and increase uh, as you adventure. Uh, and heroic abilities, which are a bit like feats. They provide you with additional definitive powers that differentiate your character uh, and give you cool things that you can do. So it's a blend really of a skill-based game and a, and a heroic ability game. Um, motivation, um, what drives your character, and that's important for advancement, uh, your gear. Uh, they do have a very light, a very light encumbrance system actually, um, which is a number of things that you can carry. Some things don't count though, like your armor and weapons. Um, so it's relatively straightforward uh, appearance and stuff about your experience. Um, the skills themselves, about how to basically roll the dice, what boons and banes are, so it has an advantage and a disadvantage system, um, uh, what opposed roles are and how they work, uh, your core skills uh, and your heroic abilities. So there's some stuff on skills. Combat and damage is well covered as well. It was, we'll, we'll, we'll run through a bit of that. Uh, magic and your magic spells, what gear is available to you, um, all the usual kind of stuff. Uh, there's a bestiary, quite small. It's, it's only a 100 page book. We'll talk a bit more about that, uh, which I like. It's great. It's a light game. It, it's, it's, it's designed to be quick and light on its feet. So I, I, there's a lot of good classics in the bestiary, I would say, uh, and how to run adventures using the game. Um, as I say, the core box will come with a second book with adventures in, and we actually do have as part of the beta, the first two or three adventures. Um, they're good fun, they're good fun. We've had a lot of fun playing them. They're classic, classic adventures. And yeah, we had a lot of fun with those. So that's really good. In the oldest times. Oh yes. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just speed through a few things. Um, Okay, some abbreviations throughout the game. Certainly the attributes are abbreviated throughout strength, constitution, agility, intelligence, willpower, and charisma. We do have hit points. We have willpower points to power these special abilities and magic and the GM and NPCs. So a little bit of, uh, there we go. So measuring time, there are three, so there are three types of time in the game. There's a, a round, which is a 10 second where you can do an action, a stretch, which is a short rest or a short rest period of time. Anyway, 15 minutes, um, explore a room, take a stretch rest, which is a recovery um, uh, or a shift of which there are obviously four in a day, six hours, and you get a shift rest, uh, which again is another type of recovery. It's very much one of these heroic games where you fall over, um, you are drained, but you can, but the, these come back at regular intervals. Um, so in that sense, it's more of the 5e sort of style of, you know, you bounce back. It's fairly heroic. Um, creating your character. Character creation is very, very quick, pretty simple. Um, you can generally choose or roll them. So you could just literally randomly determine your character right the way through. Just blat it through and get it done. Or you can even decide to pick bits or do a bit of both, which is fine. Your kin, um, oops, your kin here. Well, we've got some, some, some classics here. Human, halfling, uh, dwarf, elf, mallard. Yes, there are ducks. RuneQuest, um, sort of basic role-playing um, derived. Um, and wolfkin. Um, probably, it's probably worth saying now, um, they're going to come out with, an, with, a, with a nice third-party license. So what I'm expecting is, is the core game will come out. People will probably house rule the heck out of it if they want to. Um, uh, particularly given that it's based on 40 years of uh, Nordic role-playing. Um, so they've, there are lots of previous versions of Drakarok Demona, uh, or Dragon Bane as it's being called in the English. Um, I'm sure we're going to see gnomes and orcs and pixies and you know, shadow elves or whatever you fancy. Uh, and they'll all come out in little, little things you can probably buy on drive through or something. And um, you can extend your game if you really want to do it in those directions. So it's tr true of kin, but probably true of 
everything else, including spells, including monsters, including the heroic abilities. It'll all become it's all expandable, um, but you get the nice core from the from the well, from the core game. It's what you'd expect. Um, and so each of the kin has um, something about who the kin are, and they all have a kin ability, um, which differentiates one kin from another. And that's the core sort of thing that differentiates them. It's the, it's the ability. Um, I won't spend a lot of time going through each of the abilities, but they've all got them. Um, and in fact, the mallards being special, I've got two. Oh yeah, typical. Um, Let's have a look. So we've got halflings who are hard to find, I think, hard to catch even. Um, <laughs> dwarves are unforgiving. Um, what are the elves? I think they're, they're sort of serene or something. They've got inner peace. There you are. Mallards are ill-tempered, but they also have web feet, which means they get a boon and advantage when swimming. Yeah. And wolfkins are hunters to the core. So that's that's basically your kin. And you, ch you choose or roll a profession of which there are 10. Um, in the first of the betas, there was a heroic ability linked, hard linked to your profession. And you just took one of those. Um, now all the profession abilities are thrown in with the other heroic abilities and you can just pick one. I think, I think it's one. Um, and the key thing about a profession is that it guides you um, quite strongly on your initial skill selection. So those skills that you can be trained in, which means you've got a decent number in them effectively. Uh, and five of your, well, however many it might be, I think it's between six and eight skills um, need to be from your profession group. So we'll let, let's have a quick look at the profession. So the first is an artisan. Um, let's take a quick look and see what we've got. Typical gear that they will have, their names, their key attribute, that might be significant. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is really. But anyway, so it's important to be high, high strength. Um, the skills. So these are these are your skills which you must start with, or at least five of them that must start with, and the recommended heroic abilities that you would start with. And I think you know, I think you get to pick one. Um, are you a blacksmith, a carpenter, or a tanner? And I'm sure you could pick your artisan skill of choice and make that a heroic ability. Um, so there's your artisan, a bard. A bard similarly will have, you know, a range of different skills that they can start with and some recommended different heroic abilities. Musician being the key one for a bard. I think it probably was the one that the bard had originally as their default. Fighters, beautifully illustrated, isn't it? Gorgeous. Um, veteran was the one that was in the original, but veterans were an option amongst two, three. In fact, any of them, you can be a, I suppose a fighter and who's pick musician, whatever. Um, and the sort of gear that you start with, some armor, some weapons and stuff for fighters. Hunters. Um, yeah, the default hunter special ability was a companion. You get a small animal companion or maybe a big animal companion. I don't know who trots around with you and does what you say and loves you to bits, I think. Um, but you can also have things like twin shot, blah, blah, blah. or you're a lone wolf. We'll, have, we'll have, perhaps have a look at some of these heroic abilities and see what they give you. Um, knights, knights, mages. Now a mage will have a hard linked uh, special ability or heroic ability and that's magic. So in this game, unlike BRP, where everyone sort of generally has magic, especially if you're doing the rune quest thing, um, in possibly in Magic World originally, actually, but certainly in this game, magic is restricted to a profession, um, which I really like. You know, I'd, I'd rather have it sort of placed somewhere, but there might be ways that you could have, you know, there will be third parties and others who will say, well, hang on, could we have something like, um, you know, like a minor mage? So you can pick something up, it's got huge restrictions, but you can dabble, a dabbler in magic, maybe. Um, maybe that'll come. But for now, you get spells and what they call magic tricks, which are like cantrips. Um, minor magic, uh, but easy or f relatively low power, sort of low powered magic, which you can spend, I think it's just one willpower to make it happen. Um, mariners, merchants, 
Merchant's got a lovely, uh, had a lovely hero ability called Weasel. I'll try and remember to have a look out Weasel for you later on. Scholar. It's a very good looking mallard. Um, yeah, great. Scholars, thieves, backstabbers, assassins, or cat-like. And yeah, age. So you pick, as I say, young, adult or old, that tells you how many train skills that you have, as opposed to um, base level skills. Um, your age also is a modifier to your attributes um, and your attributes are old school rolled, as far as I can tell. Do they, do they have a, do they have a range, a set range? Don't know, 46, drop the lowest. Do it one at a time, but in any order, but one at a time, and then you can swap two. And that's how you generate attributes. Um, 18 being the maximum that you can have in an attribute. So it's a good three, it's, it's the classic three to 18 range. Quite cool. Um, and then your derived attributes. So there are a few derived attributes. There's your movement, which is based on your kin, but then modified by your agility score. Um, that's movement in meters. If you're dealing with a grid, a grid is two meters by two meters. You don't have to, um, but they've been specific about it, partly because of its origins. And the game is an old school game in a way. It's it's very traditional uh, in its setup. It's based on a very traditional game. It does have some lovely twists because it's free league, but it's essentially a fairly traditional game. Damage bonus, strength and agility. Strength for melee weapons, agility for missile. If your strength or agility is high enough, you'll get a damage bonus when you roll your damage. Hit points are equal to your con. They won't increase because it's, it's, it's not a level game. It's not a bucket of hit point game. Those are your hit points. There are talents uh, or heroic abilities called robust, which uh, gives you an increase to your hit points. And you can take robust several times, but obviously at the detriment of picking other heroic abilities. So you can up your hit points a little bit, but it ain't like D&D. <laughs> you know, you are fairly vulnerable to uh, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Your willpower points are useful for everybody because all your innate abilities, your kin abilities generally have willpower point scores. And actually willpower is used in other contexts as well, but also principally for casting magic and uh, that's equal to your will power attribute so there we are skills so i mentioned these xd skills that you're trained in and so on all skills have a base chance and all skills are linked to one of your attributes um, and depending on the size of the attribute will depend on the base chance for the skill. So if you've got a, an attribute of an, a good old average 11 or so, and then your base chance with any uh, skill that's linked to that attribute will be a base of five. Now bear in mind, this is a D20 roll equal to or less than your skill game. So uh, at, at five, you know, we are looking at a 25% chance on a base skill. All skills will increase or can increase if you choose to develop them um, after milestones, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, and quite simply, your trained skills are double your base. So if you've got a, I don't know, let's say you're, you're a, a strong fighter and you want to have good swordy skills or something, then if you're around about the 13 to 15 range, you're going to start with about a 12 for your swordy thing. And you get you know, a number of skills, five of which will be within your your profession group and a number, a small number will be free pick across the whole skill range. I say five, it says four here. Um, I think that's an errata. I think it is four. I don't know which it is. I can't remember. It's in the errata. Um, I'll have to look it up. They, they made a bit of a mistake there, I think. Uh, that, that'll get sorted out in the next beta. Anyway, you start with, I think maybe it's four profession and then the rest are all on top um there are some secondary skills um particularly schools of magic um um we'll have a look at that the, 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 again they, they talk about there about um, more secondary skills can be added in future expansions tasty it's all more to come come but the, but the core skill gets you up and running with it with the core game which is great 
Um, um, yeah, and uh, magic actually is, is uh, well, you get three skulls of magic uh, in the core game and you typically will start probably with one, but you can have you can have all three if you, if you as you go. And the heroic abilities, um, you start the game with one um, of your choice uh, with recommendations from your profession. Um, well, we'll have a look about how you get more of them and really heroic abilities and the number of heroic abilities you are is a good measure of the experience of your character. Um, um, mages don't get heroic ability, but they do start with magic. Motivation. This is quite important. It adds some depth and personality. Um, playing to your motivation in actual play is a bonus for your advancement. So they give you a hook to actually play according to some kind of core precepts that your character might have. And they give you a, a D20 roll, pick one, make your own up. You know, that's that, that's the way the game kind of plays out. I do anything for my friends. Oh, how sweet. Um, I seek knowledge of the ancient part. I mean, it's classic stuff, classic stuff. Um, I am heartbroken and take crazy risks to dull the pain. I quite like that one. <laughs> yeah, short-lived character. Um, but you know, there we go. Gear, you get gear. Uh, coins, um, copper, silver, gold as usual. 10, 10, 10 in terms of exchange. Um, uh, and your memento, which is an item that's special to you. It's important to you. An old ring, perhaps, of your, of your father or... Um, yeah, whatever it might be, a battered set of cards which you've kept for all your life. Um, you can always get another memento if you lose one, but it helps you in your recoveries because you can you can spend the time just holding your memento and reflecting on your life. It just helps you. It's quite nice. And they give you something again. D twenty roll. You can pick one. Your parents' ragged cloak, for example, or a strangely shaped stone. That could be hilarious. Anyway, more. An encumbrance, well, as I say, you get three weapons to hand. To hand weapons means you can draw them as a free action. Um, that would include a shield. Uh, helmets and armour do not count against encumbrance. Um, so they're relatively generous about that. Four rations of food count as an item. Um, you've got an, you can carry a number of items as equal to half your strength, round it up. Um, and if you're over that, then... Um, it's not very good. Uh, in the case that you must make a, a strength roll whenever you want to move in a round of combat or walk for a shift of travel. Uh, if the roll fails, you must either drop what you are carrying or stay where you are. I can't move. I'm carrying too much stuff. So, yes, it does have encumbrance because, again, it's an old school kind of a game, really. But there's a lightness of touch to it, which makes it pretty easy to play. Nice. And there's more rules about how many coins equals a thing and what you do with, you know, arrows and so on. You just don't worry about them. It's a basic answer. You know, as long as you've got a quiver, you've got arrows. They are done. Uh, and a backpack. You know, a backpack gives you another couple of things. Simple. Uh, how do you look? Well, you can roll a d20 or just you know, write something. It's up to you. You've got different coloured eyes. Perhaps you're heavily perfumed, you know, like me. Uh, experience. So how do you advance? Well, the game is an experience advancement system. Uh, every time you roll a dragon or a demon, dragon being, um, we'll, we'll, we'll come to those in a minute, but basically ones, ones and twenties. Um, when you're using a skill, you tick that skill. You, you, you tick the checkbox next to the skill. And at the end of the game session, um, you get asked a number of questions. Well, yeah, th there's a questionnaire got to fill in a questionnaire at the end of every session but they're simple questions did you turn up i think so yeah did you explore a new location no i just stayed in my room did you defeat one or more dangerous adversaries no definitely not I'll kept well clear um did you overcome an obstacle without using force <laughs> did you role play according to your motivation oh there it is yes i did I'm a lazy bugger and I just stayed where I was. Tick. That's two ticks. Um, after placing your mark, so I think you get a tick for every one of those. Every time you say yes, you can, you can tick something. Um, 
Uh, you may only place one mark per skill, but you can check the box of a skill that has already been marked by a dragon or demon roll. So the dragon or demon rolls are like anywhere, and these you can put over the top. So you can effectively have more than one tick on a skill, and then you make your advancement rolls. So this is where you actually increase for every tick, or maybe every two ticks, if you've got a dragon or a demon roll on a, on a skill. And what do you do? Well, you roll greater than the skill. You roll greater than the skill, the skill goes up by one, or 5%, effectively. Uh, you raise the marks, off you go again. Um, and that's how you advance. Um, now, heroic abilities, uh, you can, they, they suggest you can learn them in two ways. Uh, when you increase a skill level to 18, you get a heroic ability. Well, that's great. That's going to take you a while to do that. So after a grand heroic deed, the GM or the adventure can reward you with a heroic ability. Um, and that should be pretty rare. Never more than once per standard length adventure. What's a standard length adventure? Well, discuss. So that uh, that's something I think really, as a GM, you're going to want to just decide what your milestone is really going to be to, to, to grant these heroic abilities. Um, and uh, some heroic abilities do have skill requirements. So you, if you want that ability, you, your skill has to be at a certain level. Uh, you can also change your motivation, um, which is a pretty big thing. Um, and that can generally be through play. So you can set up a new one and then play to that motivation, get an extra check, make your advancement rolls. Pretty simple, pretty simple again. Skills, there are, um, and, and how you roll them. Um, so a dragon is a one, a demon is a 20. One is kind of like a critical, a nat one. So you have to, if you're a D20 sort of D&D, 4E player, maybe 5E, um, you know, Swap your thinking. Low is good. Ones are great. Twenties are rubbish. <laughs> um, skills will never be more than 18. So you can always fail. Even if you're really good at what you do, you've still got a chance of failure. Um, so yeah, rolling above the skill level is a failure. Um, yeah, okay. Don't make failure boring, they're suggesting here. Um, and actually rolling a dragon is specifically good. So you get, you know, increasing the damage of an attack or something like that, which is quite nice. Um, demons are fumbles. Let's call them, call them, call them old school fumbles. And, you know, things go wrong. You make a, make a fool of yourself. You damage yourself. You make a lot of noise. Something very particularly goes wrong. Typically you can only roll for a skill once on a thing, not, not multiple times. And if you don't have a skill, sometimes you'll roll an attribute instead of a skill. Um, but that's pretty rare. Boons and Banes. The game has got Boons and Banes, um, which are really, really nice. A Boon means basically you roll with advantage. You roll 2d20 and pick the one that you want. Um, um, if you roll a, a Bane, you, you, you have to apply the worst result. Um, to that, um, they cancel out. So you've only got you, you only ever have a boon or a bane against a skill roll, even if circumstances, which a GM might want to put in play, that oh, I'll give you a boon for that because you know you, you're well set up for that. Um, you can't have multiple uh, boons or banes. Um, the helping mechanic, the aid mechanic, means that you get a, get a, basically it's a way of giving somebody a boon and you must explain why you're helping, but it's a, it's a nice way of making sure that somebody gets a boon. Um, and then there's an optional rule. It's not described as optional here, which is good because I don't think it should be optional. I think maybe it was described as optional in the quick start. Anyway, you can push a roll. Bit of free league going on here. <laughs> so you can say, I'm gonna push this. I really, really want, um, uh, you know, to have an extra die on this. I want a boon. I want, I want, I want a boon. Um, so you roll again. If you failed, just roll again. But it costs. And the cost is you have to pick a condition. And the conditions are exhausted, sickly, dazed, angry, scared, or disheartened. And they are all linked to an attribute. So if you, if you, if you get one of these conditions, which you have to have, if you're going to push a roll, then you have to roll banes 
on any skill that's that's linked to that attribute that has that condition. So if you're angry and you've got int as uh, your uh, skill area, that skill area will be with a bane, which is roll tw roll two d twenty and pick pick the worst result. Um, um, you can't you, you can only ever have one condition per attribute. You can't multiple stack lots of conditions. Um, and once you have all the six conditions, um, you can't push a roll. It's simple as that. Um, um, conditions can be healed, and they're healed both in a uh, shift and a stretch rest. And I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. And only player characters can push rolls. Um, sort of monsters and NPCs cannot. And there is a distinction in the game between NPCs and monsters. Monsters kind of work in their own inimicable way. Which, we'll, which we will see. Uh, opposed rolls, effectively you're opposing someone directly with a very similar kind of skill. You both roll and then you look to see what the result is. If, you, if, if your roll fails, your action fails as well, regardless of your opponent's roll. Um, if your roll succeeds while your opponent fails, you succeed. And if both of you succeed with your rolls, your action succeeds if the result of your roll is lower or equal to your opponent and if it's if it's higher then your opponent wins it's an opposed role um, uh, you can push opposed roles as well um, uh, yeah it, it, it's a nice little mechanic for for combat is not an, an, a series of opposed roles, by the way. So it's not that your attack is against someone's defense. You both roll and it's done in an opposed way. It's kind of you roll an attack. If you succeed, the opponent can choose whether they wish to defend or not. And they make a separate defense roll. It works. But then that works pretty well in play. Um, the core skills. Oof, there's been a lot of talk about the skills in Dragonbane. <laughs> a lot. Um, it's gone from a very short list to a much longer list. Um, the pressure has been on from the existing Drakarok Demona players to, I think, to increase the number of skills. I think the more the newcomers have perhaps wanted a slightly more svelte and uh, tighter skill list. I'm somewhere in the middle, sort of grey sludge, you know, far and nice. I'm just that pool in the middle. Um, I don't think they've got it quite right yet. It's not far off, but I think there's probably just a little bit too many. Um, or at least they're not quite right, but they're okay. <laughs> they're all right. Um, so you've got, you know, in alphabetical order, acrobatics, awareness, bartering, beast law. They, you, you can see the attribute that these are all linked to. Bluffing, bushcraft, um, crafting, evade, and so on. A whole series of skills. And you've got, in addition to this lot, weapon skills as a separate group of skills. Um, and each of these are separate skills. So it's not that you've got a weapon skill and then you can just pick your weapon. You actually have to specialize in particular weapons and they're grouped currently in that kind of a sort of set of uh, types. Uh, the heroic abilities that I mentioned before, um, quite a few of them have willpower points to, to kick them off. So if you want to, if you've got the assassin heroic ability, for example, well, you need to have knives at 12. It's going to cost you three willpower points per, per, per uh, initiation of the heroic ability. Um, and you get extra damage on a sneak attack. Uh, it can be combined with backstabbing. Uh, wow. Okay. Sneaky killy. And indeed, there's your backstabbing um, for even more damage. Um, you may have battle cry. There's no specific requirement from your attributes. It costs you three. You can, as an action in combat, let out a battle cry that inspires your friends. Oh, it's, it's, it's the warlord, isn't it? Um, all other player characters within earshot immediately hit. Is it? it is the warlord. Uh, heal a condition of their choice. Nice. Very nice. Uh, this heroic ability can only be used in combat. So not when you're having a pint in a pub, unless you're fighting. Uh, are you a berserker? Are you catlite? Are you defensive? 
um, defensive is a really good one. And this is an example of where it breaks, sort of breaks the rules. These are rule breaking uh, talents. Um, you've got to have a melee weapon skill of 12, costs you three willpower points, but it means that you can parry without it costing you an action. Uh, can be used any time during the round. Um, you can only parry an attack once, uh, and it, but it can be used multiple times per round, as long as you've got the willpower points to spend on it. Quite powerful and significantly alters your capacity to probably survive. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a popular one, um, but you got to buy it. You got to buy it. You, you, you got to buy the heroic ability to be able to do that. Lots more. Look at all these. Double slash. What's double slash here? Axe or swords at three. You can attack two enemies within two meters with a single slash. You only roll the attack once. If it succeeds, both of the enemies are hit. Wowzer! Chopping your way through the foes. Are you fearless? You will automatically resist feel, fear. That's actually quite good. There's a lot of monsters who do fear attacks. If you're fearless, you can just go, eh. yeah, and, yeah, what, eh? Guardians, insight, um, intuition, massive blow. That sounds great. Um, a strike with a two-handed melee weapon will inflict another D8 points of damage. You, you can't go anywhere. You've got to set your feet and go way. Well, probably not way, but you know. Master spell. What is oh, masters? Master this, master that. Master spellcrafter, trainers, tanners, musician, pathfinder. Not second edition. You get a boon to your bushcraft roll when you're trying to find the right direction in the wilderness. Well, I'm lost. Find the path. Twin shot veteran. That's the one where you get to keep your card, I seem to remember. You can retain your initiative card. We'll look at that. Weasel. I mentioned weasel. There it is. There's weasel. But it's a weasel. Evade 12. If you're attacked and have another creature, friend or enemy, uh, beyond the attacker within two meters, you can activate this ability to let the attack hit that creature instead. <laughs> yes, sod. Ah, oh, they're going to love the weasel. Combat and damage. So there's a fairly biggish section on combat and damage. Um, as a step back, it's a lot of fun. So I've played it with the family. Um, they love the initiative cards. You, you put uh, There's a card round for initiative. Um, and you go on your card number, um, one through to 10, starting at one, going up to 10. Monsters which have got multiple abilities will be able to have more than one card. So their abilities will go off at different points in the round. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun in play. Um, yeah, they, they love the cards. They love the reveal of the cards. It's good fun. It's, it's a bit sort of savage in a way. Um, waiting is another thing that you can do. Um, which is tactically quite important, particularly with a one action economy. And that is you can decide, actually, I, it's now my turn. I don't want to go now. I think you should go now. And you swap your card with your either your friend, a fellow character, and they get to do their thing, um, or with a monster. And you can't refuse a trade. Now you can't say, oh, I don't, I don't want that. No, no, you're going you're gonna to do it. Um, that's fun in play as well. Really a lot of fun. Um, so there's all the act there's, a, there's an action economy, as I say. Effectively, you get one action uh, uh, and, and, and a move and free actions. And free actions will include drawing a weapon, f dropping down, getting up from prone, um, shouting something, uh, a few words, uh, and they don't count. Um, and a reaction, obviously, is you choose to defend. And you can do and you can do that out of your initiative sequence. Um, yeah, um, and you can move and then act, or act and then move, or you can move a bit, act and move. So it's fairly fluid in terms of how that will happen. It all happens in your turn, or your card initiative turn. And when you've finished your your turn or done one of these amazing things, ooh, um, then you flip your card over to signify that you are done. Okay. 
movement. You can dash, which is um, twice a move, but it takes your action. It's a lot of standard stuff. Not a lot of surprising here. Um, uh, free attacks. I mentioned the free attacks. It's the classic. It's the classic sort of, you know, acting when something moves around you. If you're standing within two meters of an enemy and then and then move away from that enemy, you must make an evade roll. The roll does not count as an action, but if it fails, the enemy immediately gets to perform an additional melee attack against you as a free attack. Um, yeah. Um, so that's just kind of the way it is. And I notice that's actually just for you. I wonder if that... Do you know what? I don't know whether that applies to PCs against NPCs. Um, doesn't say. So I think not. I think it's basically they can pin you down. Nice. Sneak attacks, ambushes, flipping your cards, combat maps. So, you know, like I say, you can have two by two meter gridded squares. Um, I think ideally I might might have preferred them to go 1.5 to stay with the five feeters. There's a lot of maps out there that are five foot squares, but uh, what the hell. Um, don't really matter. You know, you can theatre the mind it if you want, but they do give you exact meter movements. So if you want to do that, you can. Uh, ranged attacks, similarly. Um, you need to keep keep an eye on how, how far away things are. Um, some bits on terrain and what that actually means. Um, dimly lit areas are, are a bane on all ranged attacks. You don't have things like night vision in this game, thank goodness, which is a very silly kind of a rule. Um, there might be a heroic ability though that lets you do that. I don't know. I've, I've skipped past that now. Let's move on. Melee combat. I've covered a lot of this um, and indeed it's not very long. Th these sections are not long. It's, it's a very simple game. Um, yeah, you, you make a roll, you roll the damage if you succeed. Armor absorbs damage hit points. Um, if you've got a damage bonus, you apply that and roll that dice as well. Uh, if you hit an enemy with a melee attack and your strength is equal to or higher than your opponent's, you can shove things around, you can smash them back a, a couple of meters. Um, there's just enough things like you know, advantages in reach for long weapons. The critical hit, so you roll a one, a, a, a dragon on your strike, you get a critical hit and you get choices. Your choices are you can roll double the amount of di damage dice, that's lethal in this game, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, not, yeah, you, you don't roll your damage bonus twice, but you roll your weapon damage twice. Um, you can immediately perform a second attack against another enemy as a free action. That's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, or that the, the armor has no effect on the on your opponent, and you can cut slice through the armor. Um, and for a demon roll in melee, it's like a fumble. You can roll on a table and see what horrendous thing happens to you. Um, you can choose to parry if you've got an action. Um, you must declare that you're going to parry before the attacker rolls for damage. You don't have to declare your parry before they attack. So you can wait to see if they hit you, as it were. It's coming in, it's going to hit you, then you roll your parry. Or just take the blow. Um, which is which is kind of fair enough. Um, it, as I say, it breaks the initiative sequence. Um, they've, had, they've messed around with durability of weapons a little bit. I think this is one that might get house ruled at my table. But what, where are we now? What have they got to? If your parry succeeds, the enemy's attack hits your weapon or shield and you suffer no damage. However, if the damage exceeds your weapon's durability score, the weapon is damaged and cannot be used until it is repaired with a crafting roll. I think in one or other of the beta or the quick starter, it was a case of you can still use the weapon, but with a bane. Um, I've already got a house rule for this, which is the durability goes down. Um, or I might want to use a some kind of die roll to see if your weapon does not break. But um, just saying that, you know, it's now out of action until I can just see you with like, it's going to be the golf golf bag game, isn't it? Where you say, oh, I'll have the number three axe now then. Uh, I don't know. It might just get a bit tiresome in play. I want to try it, but I don't know. Um, 
there's no skill for shields, but they are very, very useful. Um, I think they get very, very, they've got high durability, I think. So they, they, they don't tend to break. Um, um, they're also, um, yeah, they've got other uses, I think, as well. So it's worth having a shield. Um, when you successfully parry an attack, you can both move yourself and an enemy two meters in any direction. So there's a bit of there's a bit of movement, uh, tactical movement in the game if you want to. Um, again, uh, if you roll a dragon when you parry, that's also great. Um, you immediately perform a counter attack uh, on your opponent, an automatic hit with your weapon that cannot be dodged or parried. Wow, this does not apply if the attacker's roll is a dragon as well. Um, wow. Dodging and how to dodge rather than parry. And then there are some special special attack options. It's even got a grapple. All games must have grapple rules, which everybody immediately forgets. I don't know what they are. Um, you can try and knock people over or disarm them. So, so there are tactics. Ranged combat, variations on a theme really. Pretty simple. So stuff about range. Um, and you can fire up to twice range, but with a bane. Uh, critical hits, similar kind of rules. You, you, you're, you're kind of varying on a theme. Um, and then damage, armor blocks. It's very handy. Uh, and what to do when you get chopped down, when you get to zero. Um, you drop to the ground and your risk of dying. No surprise. Con of 10, 10 hit points. Sword does 2d6. You haven't got any armor. Down you go. On your turn in each subsequent round, you must make a death roll. Good old death saves. They're here, which is a roll against your con. Um, you can push it um, and you keep rolling. And if you get three successes before you get three failures, you're up. You're up and you've got D6 hit points. And you think, oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be all right. If you get three failures first, before you get your three successes, um, well, you're dead. <laughs> Simple as that. Rolling a dragon counts as two successes, as in positive. Rolling a demon is two failures. Not so good. Um, if the combat ends, keep counting rounds until all death rolls have been made. Um, and you know, if you get twonked when you're down and you're dying, then that counts as a death roll failure. You're going to die. Um, rally. Another player can say, oh, go on. Get up, please. Um, they can try and persuade you and rally you to keep going. That's a free action. Once per round, if you recover, you can continue acting as normal, but you must keep making those death saves, even though you're still up on your feet. Um, you can even try to persuade yourself. Oh, I really should get up now. Um, that's with the pain. If someone does toddle over to you and say, oh, I'm going to make you feel better now with a healing roll, um, ideally with bandages, it counts as an action. Um, if the roll succeeds, you stop making death rolls, you recover D6 hit points, uh, and you basically get up. So going over and helping people up is a very powerful way of keeping people up. So I, could, I describe it as a bit like a weeble game. You drop down quite quickly, but you know, you, you kind of stagger back up quite, quite easily as well, particularly if you've got a group playing in a group and that group is looking out for each other, which typically in most D&D &D style games they are. Um, if you record uh, negative damage equal to your positive damage in one blow, you're just wiped. You know, So there are, there are the rules for that. Um, NPCs who go down to zero hit points, it's up to the, the GM to decide what happens. Typically they'll be out of action. Um, if, you, if you do survive though, and you, you you know you will roll for uh, severe injuries um or well you, you make a roll against con if you fail that con then you roll for a severe injury so you can start to collect um gouged eyes and nightmares and broken ribs and things like that um some of which will will, will recover um some of which won't <laughs> these are your conditions which we talked about. So your rests and recovery, um, a stretch rest, which is a short rest. Uh, during a stretch rest, you can heal D6 hit points or 
2d6 hit points if someone is applying healing at that time. Um, and during a stretch rest, you, only, you also recover 2d6 of your willpower points and, and heal one condition of your choice. Um, that's if the stretch is un, undisturbed. Uh, you can only recover hit points, willpower and conditions through a stretch rest once per shift. A shift being a six hour period of time. So you can have one of these in the morning, one of these in the afternoon, one of these in the evening, and potentially one of the, one in the middle of the night. Um, um, a shift rest is your long rest, which typically will happen overnight. And with a shift rest, everything comes back. You recover your hit points, you recover your willpower points, you heal all your conditions, and you, you sort of yawn, bagpuss-like, and then you're off and you're fine. Um, and there's some magic that helps with healing as well. And I think elves get a, you know, meditative improvement to whatever this is. They, they're one with nature, man. Um, yeah, some other hazard stuff, falling over, diseases, um, fear. That aforementioned fear stuff. And there's a fear table, which is quite good fun. Uh, unless you're fearless, of course. You're wrong, man. <laughs> Uh, swimming and drowning. Not if you're a mallard, probably. Um, and other things that can get you hunger and cold. And there's a little bit of roll. You know, you make rolls, you either survive or you you, you take willpower and, and, and hit point damage and stuff like that. Um, so you can get duffed over in a whole range of ways. Uh, riding animals in combat. Um, there's a whole section of improvised weapons where you pick up the chicken and throw the chicken at the, you know, it's that kind of stuff. It's great fun. And it, every improvised weapon has got a little rule that you can use. Um, I don't know if there are chickens that are improvised weapons. I'll have to check. Magic. There's magic as well. Schools of magic. I mentioned that there were some schools of magic. There's three. Uh, animism, elementalism and, and mentalism. Uh, and there's sort of general magic that everyone, all the schools can have. And if you are... Um, if you have a skill level in particular schools, then you can then you can learn the three tiered level spells that there are available to that uh, magic. And there are things like um, spells in memory. Um, so um, you can hold in your memory at the same time um, is equal to your int. Um, and if your memory is full uh, and you want to store another spell, you must forget one of the previous ones. Uh, and that takes a shift. So you've got spells that are, if you like, active in memory. Um, but you've also got a grimoire where all your spells are. Uh, those grimoires, I suspect, can take different forms depending on the school that you're in. And magic tricks are minor, relatively harmless spells. So they're, your, they're, they're your cantrips. They're not as powerful, perhaps, even as 5e cantrips. Um, and yeah. You can have as many of those as you like. They don't, they don't affect your memorization uh, of, of spells. Um, magic and iron don't mix, so you can't have mages in chainmail. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, for me, it's being encased in metal. Um, uh, you cannot use magic while in direct contact with iron or steel, except for tiny items. Okay. Um, yeah, spells are power levels from one to three, and you can chuck more power into a spell and its effect is more powerful, but it costs you more willpower. Um, yeah, there's a rule about taking power from the body by removing hit points and gaining willpower points. Yeah, I'll have to see how that works out in play. I've not used that yet. Casting time, ranges, durations, uh, dragons and demon rolls for magic and what that actually means. Um, again, very similar to melee, you know, if you roll a dragon when you're doing a spell, well, okay, the spell damage is doubled or it, it doesn't cost you any willpower points to cast it or uh, you can immediately cast another spell. It's a very similar feel um, and consistent. And with roll, rolling a demon, is there a mishap table? <laughs> oh, there's certainly, oh, it's a d20. Hey, uh, what goes wrong with your magic? You have, that's got to be on your GM screen, hasn't it? What a laugh that is. Um, how do you learn magic and the spell list? Um, this is the sort of area where we're going to see a lot of 
you know, a lot of it, grimoires up on drive through, I think, with lots and lots and lots more magic. Some of which you can pick and choose from if you really want, but they've got all, you know, a lot of the classic stuff. These these general magics enable you to kind of store spells in things to, to effectively create magical items or to store, I think, willpower, is it? Yeah, charge is a, um, it costs a stretch to do this. Um, it lasts for a shift, apparently. So for six hours, you've got a battery of willpower points. Um, transfer up to five willpower points into your battery, whatever that thing is. Um, uh, and anyone in contact with the object can use its willpower points instead of your own. Gives you strength of mind. It's quite nice. I like that. Um, um, permanence is, is quite powerful. It's, you know... Um, it means that you can make things permanent. So it becomes permanent magic item. Irrevocable, some might say. Well, politics. Let's move on. Uh, animism. Um, Birdsong, clean, cook food, floral trail, hairstyle. I think this is sort of hippie druid. I want to say hippie druid. Bouffant uh, to the max. Um, Loads of spells. Lightning bolt. Let's take a look at lightning bolt. Go on. Bang. Zaboom. So rank two. Um, so rank two spells means you've probably got a prerequisite. And the, the prerequisite is lightning flash, which is over here, rank one. Gesture. You've got to do the old. Um, whatever. Uh, action. Very quick to cast. 40 meter range. Instant. Bold lightning. 2d8 damage. Uh, but it continues to another random target within two meters of the target, inflicting 2d6, and then another two, two meters for 2d4 damage. So it goes everywhere. Heal wound. Nice. Again, a rank two. You heal another living creature for 2d8 hit points and one non permanent severe injury for each power level beyond the first. Wow. The spell heals an additional d8. You can really just heal somebody. That spell elementalism well it's tim the enchanter you know it's fireballs it's um gusts of wind blast of fire um tidal waves of workaday magic firebird that looks correct rank three fire blast firebird the firebird inflicts 2d10 2d10 damage on a hit and sets fire to flammable objects each power level beyond the first increases the damage by d10 <laughs> Uh, you spend your willpower, you'll just blow things up. That's the way of it. And mentalism, you know, it's about it's monk-like stuff, really. It's like improving the body, the way. And, um, kind of cool stuff. But there is, I think, your archetypal mentalist. There will be other schools of magic, you know, again, we're, we're going to see, you know, um, necromancers, I suspect, and goodness knows what else, uh, chronomancers who can affect time. Oh, no, no, let's not have those. Pain in the ass. Gear. You get loads of stuff, you know, how much it costs. Um, you know, it's got a long sword, classic, one-handed. Got to have a strength of 13 to use it properly. Um, it's got a one square range, does 2d8 hit points. So an average of nine, it's going to chop you down. Um, durability of 15, that aforementioned number to keep, keep the weapon going. Costs some money and does some particular types of damage. Loads of weapons, loads of musical instruments, trade goods. If you want to do a trading game, you know, drop into Traveller while you're playing this. Studies and magic. Um, notebooks, five gold. It's going to be a nice looking notebook, that. Um, light sources, tools, containers, medicines, services. Really, it's a re what I did was I just printed out these pages and gave it to the players and said, go and knock yourself out. Um, and they had a lot of fun sort of picking out the things they wanted to do and get it into their, onto their inventory and to their encumbrance. Um, hence the weights for some of these things. Um, transportation. Animals useful as your companion. Well, they're, they're, well, I mean, and you could have several chickens, perhaps as improvised weapons. There they are. 
Um, preferably cook the food. Um, bestiary. NPCs are very much like PCs in the way that they're configured. Um, they're not quite as powerful, but they are configured in a very similar way and act in a very similar way to PCs. Monsters are more like uh, Forbidden Lands. So they will have monster attacks, which often you can try and evade them or parry them. Not, not always, um, uh, but they always hit. And they do a random 1d6 uh, attack. Uh, uh, depending on their ferocity, their ferocity being the pace at which they've got ferocity of more than one. They can do more than one thing. Um, size, um, size matters uh, a little bit. Um, particularly blocking things. I'm not sure if there's any other effects of size. There should be. Um, dodging and parrying. Um, generally speaking, they're they're evaded or dodged, but not parried. Um, Conditions can be inflicted uh, and a monster will never do the same attack twice. So it will just re-roll. Or in fact, um, if it comes up again, then um, you go one step higher on the ladder um, and do that attack instead. Um, more dangerous monsters. So they, these are typical specimens. Um, you can make them more or less powerful, generally by increasing their ferocity, increasing their hit points and so on. Um, Monsters can have skills, but they are mainly used outside of combat for opposed roles, not for attacks. It'd be interesting to see how they actually end up doing attacks. So this is a stat block for a demon. Ferocity 2, large, moves 16, it's got 4 armour and has 64 hit points. Ouch. I don't want to meet one of those. Um, can do two things. And the monster attacks for a demon are dread, claw attack, curse, jeez, unseen ferocity, um, hurling 2d8 meters backwards with tremendous force, bludgeoning damage of 2d8 while you're at it and lands prone, just throws you away by its, by its will alone. I mean, it's just horrendous. And a dragon. There you go. Frosty 3 does three things around. Three cards it will get. Three, sir. Huge. 84 hit points. Six armor. Moves 24. Moves freely through the air. Dragon roars, attacks. Dragon wind. Fire breath. Hit by the flames. 3d10 damage. Don't forget you've got, you know, 12 hit points. Or, um, armor has no effect. <laughs> you're out <laughs> goodbye uh, dragons um, special dragon magic armor I'm guessing dragon shields built made by the dwarves um, wow ghosts special immunity um, because they're they're you know they're immaterial beings got their own attacks again you can make them more powerful if you want. These are enough to give you a template, templates on which you can think about designing and building your own. Much as I expect to see a grimoires, I expect to see bestiaries and uh, monster folios for Dragon Bane as people just go wild and either adapt and use Forbidden Lands monsters, which I think is probably a good idea, quite an easy way to thing to do. If you've got Forbidden Lands or some of the Forbidden Lands ex expansions, they will adapt very quickly and easily as monsters within Dragonbane. Oh, so it goes. Giant spiders, poison stings, you know, goblins. Right, goblins are NPCs. So they're, they don't have the goblin attack, sorry, they don't have the monster attack table. They do attacks with their typical weapon, a long spear. Um, uh, what have we got here? Typical weapons, short bow, short sword, maybe long spear, I don't know. Skill level 10, there you go, 10. Or a long spear, skill level 12. So the, the, they'll make an attack roll, just as you will. Uh, and they've got other things like evade 10 and studded leather armor, two, 
10 hit points. Um, and then there's some things about them being nocturnal or not liking sunlight. So NPCs, again, you can play with these. You've got a scout and a warrior. So two different types of goblin there. You can make some more if you like. Griffins, they're monsters. Harpies, they're fun. They're a lot of fun, particularly the eye gouge. A bit of that. Manticore, nasty. Minotaur. The orcs, orcs again are NPCs. So um, we've got a warrior, a shaman and a chieftain uh, here. Uh, the chieftain's got 24 hit points. Ouch. Um, pretty good. They get abilities, veteran, defensive, dual weapons, and they've got robust times four, which, which is why they've got so many hit points. Wow. Orcs, skeletons, trolls, whites. You know, it's this is classic stuff, isn't it? This is classic stuff. Vampiric bats, common animals. Can't find a chicken there. So these can be your companions or, you know, a horse. You may want to have a different thing for a war horse as well. And then some advice on adventures and running adventures. Um, pathfinding, traveling, um, how far you can travel, mishaps on the way, make a roll, um, camps, um, food it's it, it's not it's not got the sort of depth that forbidden lands has which is very much a scavenging game out in the wilds but it has got that feel about it and probably enough um to give you a flavor of what you need to do out in the wilds um i haven't used that a lot yet um then some stuff about you know what should you do as a gm um and um how to play non-player characters range of non-player characters here you know you've got your archetypal bandit here skills hit points short swords um there's even minions so f the the reach of fourth edition dungeons and dragons everywhere um loads to be getting on with their um attitudes motivations traits names all randomly generated and how to create adventures and how you know what steps do you take um treasures quests you can roll them randomly if you want journeys what you might find on a journey and adventure sites again i've said it many times i think you're going to see adventure sites for uh dragon bane all set up for you you can just drop that adventure site into your into your campaign um the character sheet I'll, I'll end with a character sheet just um just to sort of show you what you've got it's it's it covers everything you know you, you've got your obviously you've got your attributes you've got your place to put your conditions your damage bonuses and your movement the skill the skills in the center there with your ticks for your um dragons and demons as you're playing your inventory and your encumbrance limit um abilities and spells so your your heroic abilities and the spells that you might have um armor and uh, how much it's going to protect you uh your willpower points and your hit points your weapons and your damage and they even give you a an easy to print print uh sheet and we're done and we are done um yeah nice really nice I like that dragon bane now i've just taken you i've taken you through the pdf of the beta um at least the current version of the beta as at time of recording um i think we'll find that there'll be another one on the way why do i like the game i mean you know you you, you sort of look at you think well all right it's all right i really like it i really like it because it pushes a lot of my buttons um, I'm an old BRP person, so it does that. I love the free league style of games, you know, um, re really well done. 
lots of nice tweaks, consequences to actions, a tightly defined set of actions uh, in a combat encounter, um, a skill list, um, which you can use um, quite inventively. Um, will I include skill challenges in my Dragon Bane game? Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. And you just blend them in. You've got, you've got skills to use. Um, are there the right skills? Are there too many skills? Well, again, you can you can adapt that, I think, um, to your game. I think they're, they're not far off. Um, and it plays fast and furious at the table. A lot of fun. The card initiative is good fun. Um, how will it play out in long-term play? That I don't know. Um, but I will find out because I intend to do long-term play with it. I think it's going to be a great game. A really great game. I can see me doing most of my heroic fantasy, most of it, using Dragonbane. I will want to slip occasionally into other things. Obviously, 4th uh, edition Dungeons & Dragons for me. Um, heroic fantasy, actually, which is my own black hack game, which has got sort of a lot of similarities to this. If anything, it's possibly even slightly simpler than this. Um, yeah, and probably others, maybe Forbidden Lands um, as well for a slightly different style of game um, would be great. And indeed, probably others uh, along the way. But Dragon Bane could well be a staple. Maybe my base, the place that I start with when I want to do heroic fantasy role playing. Um, and I really can't wait to see what people will do with it you'll get a hundred hundred plus page core rule book a lovely start of adventures um and then what well then it'll get expanded in lots of interesting places and they'll build um flavor grimoires monsters um uh, site locations kin professions heroic abilities without com making the game hopefully any more complex. I mean, some people will have maybe optional rules that they might want to put in. Um, but I think the core of it's gonna be around describing ex expansions to the core framework, plus hopefully settings and adventures, which is where it really is at, isn't it? That's where we really get the value, settings and adventures. A great fun game, I would say. Um, We'll, we'll we'll do some more of Dragon Bane uh, as it comes through. Maybe we'll look at the next beta. I think when the game is actually released, we'll take another look at it on this channel. Um, I'm, 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 I've mentioned a few times, haven't I? I might do a streamed game at some point. Um, would Dragon Bane be one of them? Uh, we, we're we're going to get a Foundry module. We're going to get, I think, a Roll20 module. Um, you can already play the game. Uh, on uh, playroll.com, the Roll Virtual Tabletop. So, uh, it, online play, definitely. Um, I think we'll get a lot of play. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed that sort of run through. Um, I think it's I think it's a, a, a strong blend for me. And when I want to break from your sack of hit points and um, you know h highly incrementing bonuses then this is the game. Your hit points are not gonna get much higher. You can have a blend of more experience and less experienced characters whilst all still being able to impact the game much more easily. Um, yeah, I think it's got a lot going for it. Cool. Right, we shall probably leave it there then. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for Dragon Bane. If you, if you haven't uh, participated in it yet, I'd recommend you do so. It's low cost and um, you get you get the game in beta form straight away. Join the forums. And we'll keep talking about it. Cheers. See you later.